So you want to design a brand identity? Well, the reality is you're going to have to take courses in logo design, typography, color selection, and brand strategy. But if that sounds overwhelming to you, then today I've got my exact four-step process that has proven to be successful over the last year. Today, we're going to be designing a brand identity for a villa rental business named Arcadia. If we haven't met already, my name's Jack Watson and I'm a brand designer from Manchester. And this year, I'm going to be posting every single week on YouTube to help you on your creative journey. In the next few weeks, I'm going to be launching my design agency and I'm going to be sharing with you exactly how I build it from the ground up. This is going to include how I warm out reach, cold outreach, what content I create, and also the systems that go into it. Just before we jump into the video, I also want to share with you my weekly newsletter, which I send out free templates every single week. You won't want to miss it because after the first seven days, you're going to have to pay for them templates, so make sure you're there nice and early. Let's jump into the video. Step one is the introduction call. Now, when a client's first discovered me, they're most likely going to visit my website. So looking at my website here, you'll see that I have my portfolio first, and then further down, you'll see these big buttons for work, shop, info, and book a call. Just quickly taking you through it now, my work, shows my portfolio the shop shows some free templates which you can grab if they're still there by the time you're watching this and they also show my services if you want further information you can click this info button here which details a bit more about me to the client and it also shows my process and then it also shows my services past clients and my offerings so now if a client thinks we're a good fit they'll most likely click this book a call button and this will take you straight to my calendly so i only let the client book a call within the first seven days the reason i do this is because i don't want the client to lose interest or be persuaded out of the deal by only having the availability for the first seven days it improves the chances that the client will actually follow through with the call so you'll see that i've it up so the client has to enter their name, email, and then also a few checklist items to make sure that there's no time wasters applying these forms. So the first one is, are you seeking a rebrand or initial branding for your business? Obviously, the client's going to say yes here. If they say no, then this isn't for them anyway, and I don't know what they're doing filling this format, wasting their own time. Next, we have, what is your estimated budget for your branding project? Now, we want this to show our minimum price because we don't want clients booking in if they think they're going to do it for free or if they think that they can do it in return of exposure. So instead, I have my estimated budgets here and then also underneath it, we have, do you agree to honor your requested time slot and show up with all the decision makers on the call? If you do not honor the time slot and we receive no communication from you, we will be forced to blacklist you from our system. This reduces time wasters because believe me, people will fill out this form without actually wanting to go through with branding just for the sake of filling out a form. I don't know why, but it happens all the time. But since I put this bottom bit in, it doesn't happen half as much. So now you know how the call's initiated, let me show you exactly what I do on the call. If you're already subscribed to my newsletter, you'll have noticed this template got sent straight to your inbox. Let me show you exactly what it is and let me show you why it's so beneficial. So when you're jumping on this first client call, you really want to pitch your services to the client and you really want to make sure that you definitely close the deal. So when I get on the call with the client, I pull up this document as a PDF and I quickly run through the about me section. Then I jump into what services I can offer because even if the client's only asked for a certain amount of services, there might be something in here that catches their eye which you can upsell them to. After the services, I go straight to the my process. Depending on what the client's actually asked for in the first place depends on what I change these sections to. As you can see, this template is laid out for the client once in logo design, brand identity, and also web design. So this shows my process from start to finish with kickoff and research, strategy and direction, logo design, logo refinement, final logo and UI showcase, revisions and development, development and brand guidelines, and finalization and launch. Now the client loves to see a clear process because they know exactly what they're paying for. And then that's when we hit them with the client testimonials. These are really good for selling your client into your services, especially if you've worked with some big names, you can always put them in here and wipe this little blue badge. After we've shown them the testimonials, we're jumping into the next steps and timeline. If you already know what the client's after, then it can be really handy to put a timeline together beforehand, just showing them a rough idea of when you think the project's going to be complete. Again, if you want this template, you can get this for free on my website at jackwatsondesigns.com forward slash shop. And I'd also definitely recommend you sign up to the newsletter because you don't want to miss out on this free content. So hopefully after the call with the client, the client wants to proceed to work with you and then this takes us on to step two, which is the discovery phase. So this is the brand discovery section. Now, this is where I send a questionnaire out to the client to find out more details about the business. I'll also agree on some brand nouns that they're happy with representing the business with. So let's quickly run through this list here. You'll be able to find this on my website, at jackwatsondesigns.com. And I will also be sending this out in the newsletter completely for free. So yeah, sign up to the newsletter, link in bio at jackwatsondesigns.com. You should see a pop up on the screen, Just put your email into there and you'll receive all of these amazing free templates, which will help you on your journey. Let's jump into it. So we start off with describe your ideal customer. Who are they? Consider age, interest, etc. This helps us understand the brand's voice, message and personality to allow us to align the brand in with the target demographic. Next, we have problem solving. What issues do your products or services solve for your customers? Now, this is the main point of most businesses to solve a problem. So the question helps us understand the problem 
which ultimately helps us craft the brand narrative that positions the client's offerings as the solution. And this is also going to help us build trust with potential customers too. So going on to the next one, competitions brand, can you list below links to the competitors' websites? Now, what this allows us to do is differentiate the client's brand from competitors. And then on the flip side, it also lets us spot any brand consistencies or industry standards that we might be unaware of with not being too familiar with the industry. Next, we have emotional impacts. What emotions do you want your brand to evoke in consumers? The emotion the brand evokes plays a massive role in the consumer engagement and loyalty. So our goal is to create a brand that triggers the right emotional response ultimately. Then we have brand description. What are five words that describe your brand? Now, I truly believe that simplifying the brand's essence into five words helps us keep the branding focused and consistent we need to know exactly how we want the consumers to perceive the brand. Brand preferences. What do you like about your current branding that you wish to retain? Now, the last thing you want is to perform a rebrand and the client has this one aspect that they can't let go of and then you have to redo the entire logo. Trust me, this has actually happened before. Inspirational brands. Which brands inspire you and why? This list helps us identify common similarities in the client's taste, which we might be able to adapt into the branding in some way. Brand simplification. Are there any elements you'd consider removing to simplify your brand's message? Now, a simplified brand message can be more effective, making it easier for customers to understand and connect with a brand. Often when rebranding businesses, we're faced with these awful websites with tons of information that's usually 50% useless so this helps keep it concise and then finally we've got the brand nouns for logo what key nouns or symbols represent the essence of your brand i've used the example here of a puzzle piece and a cursor which is for my brand puzzle which i'll be announcing very soon that i mentioned briefly in the start of the video and i actually stole this part of the process from alan peters his book logos that last and i definitely recommend it to anyone it's an amazing book i did a review of this on linkedin yeah, amazing no matter what level you're at. So definitely check him out. He's an amazing logo designer. And that takes us nicely into step three, creating the logo. Now the clients agreed on four things that they'd be happy to incorporate into the logo. A villa, a palm tree, a sunset, and a key. I start by sketching anything that comes to mind relating to these words whilst also trying to see if I can spot any way of working negative space into the logos. I always like to keep in mind the brand initials just in case we can also represent them in the logo too. When sketching a villa, it started to become apparent that a villa arch could represent an A. However, it still wasn't doing it for me. After further refining the logo, I implemented a palm tree through negative space into the arch and I was confident that this was the winner. Let's take it into Adobe Illustrator. I simply copy and paste the photo into Adobe Illustrator and then from here I created a grid by drawing a rectangle, changing the fill to a stroke and then heading to object, path, split into grid. Then I began building the icon. It's important to make sure that snap to point is on here, which can be found in view as this allows the points to snap to the grid when creating shapes. Once I was happy with the outline, it was time to create a palm tree. For this, I created it using the golden ratio. And if you're wondering how to calculate it, start with your smallest circle and continuously multiply it by 1.618. The next step was to use the shape builder tool to piece it all together. I then like to minimize the amount of anchor points where necessary. More anchor points means more trouble. From here, I further refined the logo until I was happy with this final version, which leads me into step four, building a logo system. We still needed to match the logo with some fonts. So here's what we went for in the end using fonts Gist and Futura. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next.